a birth death process. To model a system with birth rate lambda, we could use the differential equation dn dt equals lambda times n, n of 0 equals n naught, where n of t is the number of individuals and n naught is the initial condition. The differential equation is deterministic. It always has the same continuous solution, n of t equals n naught times e to the power of lambda times t. The above model includes only births and neglects the possibility that an individual might die. Let's introduce deaths into the model. Imagine that deaths occur at a rate mu, which means that each individual has a probability mu of dying in each unit of time. How would you add the death rate mu to our differential equation model? Pause the video to work out your answer. To add the death rate mu to our differential equation model, we simply add the term minus mu times n to the differential equation. Can you solve this differential equation? Again, I strongly urge you to pause the video and write down the solution. The solution to the differential equation with both births and deaths is n of t equals n naught times e to the power of lambda minus mu times t. So if we set the birth rate to lambda equals 0 0.1 and the death rate to mu equals 0 0.05, and the initial condition is n naught equals 2, the solution is n of t equals 2 times e to the power of 0 0.05 t. What changes if we add the same number to both birth and death rates? If we set lambda to 0 0.2 and mu to 0 0.15, the solution is still n of t equals 2 times e to the power of 0 0.05 times t, which makes sense since the differential equation is still dn dt equals 0 0.05 times n. Nothing changed. We also get the same differential equation and the same solution if the birth rate is 0 0.05 and the death rate is 0. The deterministic differential equation isn't affected by births that are offset by deaths. Only the net birth rate, or birth rate minus death rate, matters. Does that seem realistic? Is a death really the same as not having a birth? Of course, individuals might not like high death rates, as that means each individual life would likely be shorter. But, as far as the dynamics of the total population size, should there be a difference if both the birth rate and the death rate increased by the same amount? We can't see the difference between deaths and lack of births with our deterministic model. But, if we allow for stochastic or random effects, we can account for the difference. Especially if the population size is small, a death could be radically different than not having a birth. Imagine the above scenario, where we started with a population of just two individuals. If a death happens before the first birth, suddenly the population size drops in half to one individual. Let's imagine we have asexual reproduction, or that we are tracking only females, so that the one individual could give birth and the population size could increase again. After this first death, we are down to one individual. Obviously, the population is in a precarious state. If that last individual dies before giving birth, we're down to zero individuals, and the population has gone extinct. Could this happen, that we get two deaths before a single birth, even if the birth rate is higher than the death rate, as we had in the previous examples? A stochastic model that captures these births and deaths is called a birth-death process. We let capital N of t denote the random number of individuals in time t. We look at how N of t could change during a small interval of time of length delta t. We assume that the interval of time is sufficiently short so that we could have at most one birth or one death in that interval. We need to specify three probabilities. The probability of one birth, the probability of one death, and the probability that we had no births or deaths in the interval. Let's say at the beginning of the interval, capital N of t equals lowercase n, where lowercase n is some positive integer. If the birth rate is lambda, then we multiply delta t by lambda times the population size n to get the probability of a birth in that interval. This is the probability that, starting with n individuals at time t, the number of individuals increases due to a birth to n plus 1 by the end of the interval i.e. at time t plus delta t. We model deaths in the same way, based on the death rate mu. 
If we have a death, the population size will decrease by 1, from n to n minus 1. Hence, the probability of having a population of size n minus 1 at the interval, conditioned on having a population size of n at the beginning of the interval, is death rate mu times population size n times interval width delta t. Since the only other possibility is that we had no births or deaths, this probability must be 1 minus the sum of the other two probabilities. The probability that we state at n individuals over the entire interval is 1 minus lambda times n times delta t minus mu times n times delta t. These three equations, along with an initial condition, prescribe the birth-death process for the stochastic evolution of population size via random births and deaths, where we assume that both the birth rate and the death rate are constant. The population size, capital N of t, randomly jumps up and down by 1 when each birth and death occurs. Notice that if the population size ever reaches 0, i.e. if lowercase n is 0 in these equations, then there are no more births or deaths, and the population size stays at 0 with probability 1. That makes sense, as extinct populations can't randomly reverse their extinction. To illustrate the birth-death process, let's simulate the model with some of the parameters we discussed earlier. We'll let the birth rate lambda be 0 0.1 and the death rate mu be 0 0.05. Let's imagine we are simulating a population of cells and we start with n0 equals 2 cells at the beginning of the experiment. Here is the result of one simulation. We see births where the number of cells jumps up by 1 and deaths where the number of cells drops by 1. In this simulation, the births happen more frequently than the deaths, and the population size increases, reaching 10 at some point. Since the birth rate is twice the death rate, it's not surprising that we see more births. When we repeat the simulation, however, we get quite a different result. We get a birth followed by a death, then another birth followed by a death, and then a third birth followed by a death. However, then an unfortunate sequence of events occurs. We get two deaths in succession without any births, even though the birth rate is higher than the death rate. The population size drops from 2 to 1 to 0. At that point, the population went extinct, so remains at 0 permanently. In a third simulation, we observe an intermediate result. The population has two births early on, then stays around 4. It hasn't gone extinct yet, but stays precariously low. A summary of 10 simulations illustrates the diversity of results. It's hard to distinguish all the different trajectories, but we see that in two of the 10 simulations, the population is already extinct. We superimpose the result from the deterministic model, showing the exponential growth prediction. The deterministic model doesn't capture the behavior of the stochastic simulations. The continuous solution to the deterministic model does not exhibit extinctions, takes on non-integer population sizes, and misses the large variability of the stochastic simulations. To further illustrate the model, we quadruple the simulation length and double the number of simulations to 20. It's hard to tell from the picture, but in 8 of the 20 simulations, the cell population went extinct. In the remaining 12 simulations, the population cells appear to be growing, but there's large variability and it doesn't closely follow the deterministic model prediction. Recall that if we increase the birth rate to 0.2 and the death rate by a corresponding amount to 0.15, the deterministic model is unchanged. The deterministic model is affected just by the difference between the birth and death rates, and so still exhibits exponential growth at the net growth rate of 0.05. The stochastic simulation, however, is significantly affected by increasing both the birth and death rate. The variability among the simulations increases, and the number of extinctions jumps to 14. Although the birth rate is still 0.05 larger than the death rate, the fact that the ratio between birth and death rate dropped increases the likelihood of an extinction. In the first case, the birth rate was twice the death rate, or 100% larger than the death rate. In the second case, the birth rate was only one-third larger than the death rate. With a smaller relative difference, it is more likely that, at some point in the simulation, we have two more deaths than births which leads to an extinction. If we increase the initial condition to 20 cells, we see that the variability in the stochastic solutions is reduced. We no longer see any extinction events as, for these parameters, we are unlikely to ever get 20 more deaths than births. 
For both sets of parameters, the stochastic solutions are closer to the deterministic model. If we further increase the initial condition to 200 cells, the distinction between the two sets of parameters is hardly noticeable. In both cases, the stochastic simulation tends to mimic the deterministic model. It seems like stochastic effects are important with small population sizes, and less important when the population size is larger.